Hi everyone, my name is Mike Oberst, and I'll be presenting this work, which is joint with collaborators from the University of Copenhagen, Nikolai Toms and Jonas Peters, as well as with my advisor, David Sontag. Now, typically in machine learning, we have some outcome we would like to predict, like disease in this example. And we may have some features, which are causes of that outcome, and others which are caused by that outcome, such as laboratory tests and symptoms, and naturally many other features with many other possible causal relationships. This is our observed distribution, but there may be other important unobserved variables with important causal relationships of their own. For instance, access to healthcare could have an effect on both the quality and the frequency of laboratory testing in our data set. If an individual can't access high quality tests, then their lab results may differ. Now, a challenge is that if there is a change in the distribution of this variable, then that will may cause a degradation in the performance of our models. In this example, for instance, if there is a large change in the distribution of A, then it may cause models that depend too heavily on laboratory testing to perform poorly. This raises two questions. First, how do we protect against shifts in unobserved variables in the first place? And second, how do we balance accuracy and robustness? In this example, the most robust model might be one that doesn't use laboratory testing at all, but this might be a step too far, particularly if we don't think that interventions on A will change distribution too much. With this in mind, we frame the problem as one of distributional robustness, where we would like to minimize a worst case loss over a set of interventions upon A itself knowing that interventions on A will have some downstream effect, potentially on both X and Y, and we won't assume any knowledge of the causal graph between X and Y. Now, this is going to require some assumptions, naturally. First, we'll assume a linear structural causal model over all observed and unobserved variables, and that's going to look something like this. All variables are related linearly to each other with independent additive noise, but we are not making any restrictions on the causal graph between x, y, and even additional hidden variables h. But we will require that a is an anchor variable with no causal parents. So while we are making an assumption of linearity, all of the graphs that you see at the bottom of the slide, for instance, are permitted under our assumptions. We'll also assume access to proxy variables. And when I say a proxy, I mean in this instance, a variable that is a linear function of A with independent additive noise. You can think of this as noisy self-reported survey data that might be collected during training to improve the robustness of our models. But these variables will not be available at test time. Now, I would like to highlight that this objective has two areas where we use prior knowledge. One is, of course, the specification of this variable A. But the second is the specification of this robustness set C. And to give more intuition for our contributions, I'd like to discuss that a bit further. So here's an illustrative example where I've plotted a variable A along two dimensions, remembering that A itself can have many dimensions. And I've shown here the training distribution. Now, we might be concerned about interventions on A that move it outside of this training distribution or otherwise change its value. Anchor regression, which is prior work, assumes that A is observed and shows how to optimize a worst case loss of the following form, that's the same now as what I showed you before, over a particular robustness set, which is this CA lambda. Now, we first prove that if only a single noisy proxy is available, then this robustness set is provably reduced and that this reduction is not identifiable from data alone. Second, on a more positive note, we show that if two proxies are available, one can recover the original guarantees with a modified objective. Now, we also show how to extend all of these results, including recovery with two proxies, to more general robustness sets, such as the one shown here on the bottom left. In this paper, we argue for incorporating prior knowledge about future shifts in a couple of ways. And I encourage you to come to the poster and, of course, read the paper for more information. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the conference.